Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Anybody else there? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to our service this morning, Sunday, December the 20th, 2020. I guess we're about two weeks into this COVID thing. Again, what I like to say from Matthew 123, look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. When Holly was six years old, her best friend, Andy, was killed by a car. Since the children played together nearly every day, Holly's mother explained as gently as she could about Andy's accident, hospitalization, and a few days later about his death. About a week after Andy died, Holly began asking, can I go to Andy's house? No, honey, he isn't here. After weeks of daily asking, mother gently explained, honey, Andy died. That means he won't be at his house. It means he won't be able to play with you anymore. I know, Holly replied, I wanna go anyway. She left Holly walk to Andy's house, worried that perhaps Holly truly didn't understand his death and likewise fearing how Andy's mother would feel about his friend's arrival on the doorstep. She nervously waited for her daughter to return. Finally, Holly came home. Her mother asked breath breathlessly, where have you been? At Andy's house with his mom. What on earth were you doing there all that time? I just curled up on her lap and helped her cry. By, by virtue of her age and innocence, Holly did something that many adults avoid. She sat with Andy's mother and shared her grief. She offered no advice, no platitudes, no wise words. She was simply present. Consider being present for someone going through difficulty this Christmas and all year long. Thank you. Read it. Scripture for this week is, but uh, before I read the scripture, as I look around on the computer screen, I don't see very many smiling faces out there. I mean, God bless. This is the uh, week of our Lord's birth, Jesus' birth, and it looks like we're going to uh, some funeral or something. Come on, guys, let's smile. Come on, Mr. John, I can see you back there. Come on, John. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ray, come on. <laughs> Very good, guys. Thank you, Marge. Come on, Marge. <laughs> the scripture for today, I'll be reading from um, the New International Version, and it uh, is Matthew 1, eight, verses 18 to 25. The birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But 
after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And he said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet, through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until he, she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. Pastor Eric, the message for today, Living Dreams by uh, Pastor uh, Eric Henderson. Eric, um, thank you for the sermon today. Take care of us, help us to open our ears and give us the uh, great blessing. Eric, thank you. Come on guys, let's go. Let's get those smiles going. Thank you. Good job, Cheryl. <laughs> It's the time of year when we might ask people or they might ask us, so what are your plans for the holidays? We might answer something like, well, how long do you have to listen? There's planning for today or what to do with children home from school or what presents to buy, what cookies to bake, what food to prepare, cards to send, what to say and not say to family. Then there's planning for Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and planning for 2021 and beyond. Some of us may be list makers and meticulously plan our day's schedule. Others may keep a plan in our minds. We're planners. Yet for all our planning, it's uncertain what will actually happen. A wintry mix of snow and ice, or a birth or death, an accident or illness, a pandemic, a natural or man-made disaster, or uncertainty of whether or not our plans will actually happen. And we are people of faith that our plans could be affected by God who regularly intervenes, interrupts, and sometimes is seemingly invisible. Joseph had plans. Joseph had a plan for his life that would be filled with peace, hope, joy, and love. He hoped and planned for a joyful, peaceful, customary engagement, followed by a wedding to the good Jewish girl named Mary then settling down and having many Jewish children, teaching them Torah, carpentry, going to the temple, and living and loving joyfully ever after. Then God intervened, interrupted Joseph and Mary's plan. Mary became pregnant. Joseph was surprised. It wasn't his child. So who's the father? Mary's pregnancy called for a change of plans. Joseph knew God's covenant, so was influenced by it. And the covenant emphatically states, if a man happens to meet in a town, a virgin pledged to be married, and he sleeps with her, you shall take both of them to the gate of the town and stone them to death. Well, that was one possible plan. Expose Mary and let the stones fall where they may. Joseph also knew God's covenant stated, 
do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I imagine Joseph as a tender-hearted, compassionate man who shuddered to think of Mary ruthlessly dragged before the elders, accused, convicted, then stones flying through the air, thudding against Mary's body over and over in the screaming, crying, groaning in pain, bloodied, and finally, silence. I imagine Joseph wondering, how could loving Mary as myself include a plan to expose her and stone her to death? Eventually, Joseph had a plan. Divorce her quietly. No accusations or trial or death. No disgrace, yet faithfulness to Torah's call to love neighbor as self. That's what Joseph had in mind as the plan to deal with the unexpected pregnancy. It was the right plan. It was a righteous plan. I'm guessing that most of us have in our mind a plan for today, a plan for Christmas, New Year's, a plan for 2021, a plan for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, for our faith community. We're like Joseph and Mary. We have in mind what's next and what's the right thing to do. We hope to live and plan to live in peace, hope, joy, and love, and plan to help others do the same. Then sometimes, God unexpectedly intervenes and interrupts our plans. God prompts us or prompts others to do something we didn't plan. Perhaps the prompting is to visit someone to patiently listen as someone goes on and on, to pray for someone, to serve in a new way. We might hear God ask us to start something new, or God allows an event to happen we didn't plan for or never imagined. What will we do? Barge ahead with our well-laid plans like an unstoppable blizzard? Shake our fists and yell in anger at an invading God, an intrusive God? Or embrace God's plans? Joseph could have moved ahead with his plan to divorce Mary quietly if he had put on his earmuffs. turned up the stereo with his favorite Christmas carols like Hark the Herald Angels Sing or We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And had Joseph worked at a frenetic pace, attended lots of parties, made lots of wooden gifts, his dreaming would have had no time to distract him from his plan. Silly Joseph, he slept, he dreamed, he listened, and God changed his carefully crafted plans. Joseph dreamed and heard God's plan for the future. Joseph heard, don't be afraid to marry Mary. Don't be afraid to get involved in my plans. Don't be afraid of my plan to name this child Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Don't be afraid of my plan to be Emmanuel, God with you and all people. 
then and now, God's plan is to save us from the sins of domination, division, destruction, and death. And God sets the example. Rather than domination, God comes as a vulnerable, helpless infant. Rather than division, God joins us in human flesh. Rather than destruction, Jesus builds a kingdom based on doing to others as we would have them do to us. A kingdom with self-giving love as a foundation. And rather than death, God in Christ offers new life. Numerous prophets poetically described God's plan. Isaiah described God's plan as a peaceable kingdom for all people. A day of the Lord when oppressors are overthrown. Corruption is replaced by virtue and integrity. When justice abounds. God's plan poetically described, they shall beat swords into plowshares. God's people have implemented God's plan by guns and tanks being melted down into jungle gyms. God's plan poetically described, the wolf shall live with the lamb. God's people have implemented God's plan by Christians and Muslims, conservatives and liberals, living respectfully in the same town, serving side by side to feed the homeless hungry. God's plan poetically described, they will not hurt or destroy. God's people might implement God's plan by children and adults stopping hatred in the form of bullying and killing. God's dream poetically described, God's spirit will be poured out on all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. God's people have implemented God's plan by women and men being treated equally in homes, in churches, at work, in schools, by governments. God's plan poetically described, old and young will dream dreams. We might implement God's plan by people of all generations uniting to prepare a meal, or old and young creating plans to serve our neighbors in Adams County. So what did Joseph do with God's plans? And what will we do with God's plans? We might put on earmuffs. Or put in our earbuds. Turn up the volume. And sing loudly, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Deck the halls. And make certain we're not distracted from our plans. We could shout at God. God, your plan of peace, of justice, of enemies working together, of hope and love is crazy. It just doesn't work. Never has, never will. No thanks to your plans. I'll do it my way. We could also get busy. Work at a frenetic pace. Attend lots of parties. Shop until we drop. Then ignore any dreams, any voice from within or without. How will we respond to God's plan? We could consider Joseph as a model. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him 
and took Mary home as his wife. Joseph was not afraid of whatever might happen so that God can be with us, Emmanuel. Let us not be afraid to listen and courageously do what God asks. Joseph allowed God's plan to alter his plans. Let us allow God's plan to alter our plans so all will be saved from the sins of domination, division, destruction, and death. Let us allow God's plan to become our plan. Join me in prayer. God of the past, present, and future. Thank you for the indescribably amazing plan of living among us to save us. We rejoice that you plan to save from the sins of domination, division, destruction, and death. Open our ears and minds to your plans. We wait in silence to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Jesus, give us the same spirit of courage that enabled Joseph, Mary, and so many others to say yes to your plans and dreams. In Jesus' name, amen. I didn't see too many smiles, but I'm seeing smiles every few minutes on here. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Attitude's 90% of anything you do. Let's keep it going. One of these days, we're going to have a great revival. It's going to start right here. Bethel <laughs> Church. they <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> All right. Um, since I prayed for everybody uh, as, as, as the need arose... Um, I would like to say, let's bow our heads in, in conclusion. Um, Lord, thank you. We have presented many prayers to you. Lord, we just want the confidence in you that we need to have. We need to learn to love and to serve you better, Lord. Uh, don't let our petty differences uh, arise and, and whatever they may be. Um, our hopes and fears are tied up in you, Lord. Um, help us, stay with us, keep the spirit alive in us, Lord, and help us to learn to love and to serve you better. And again, Lord, I pray for revival. I pray for this country. I pray for the military, all branch of the service. I pray for uh, all the good guys and all the bad guys, Lord. Lord, I pray for this COVID virus thing. Um, I don't understand it all completely, Lord. Um, but, uh, Lord, maybe we do have some hope in the future with this, uh, vaccine. Help us, Lord, stay with us, Lord, and thank you. All these things I do pray, and we do pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for answering. Keep us smiling for you, Lord. Thank you. Continue to watch over us. May his light shine in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments, Eric? 
<laughs> yes, I will. Uh, I will also add this blessing from Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May it be so.